Can I show you some other pictures? That one? That's a snake. A snake. Yeah. Look at these pictures. Look at these pictures. <laughs> Deborah Leinbarger is a developmental psychologist who studies how different forms of media help kids learn. She often uses her four children in her research. Yeah, I'm not doing evil things. I'm not hooking them up to electrodes, although I do eye tracking. And, and when I describe that, I say, I'm shooting infrared light into the back of their eye. And then I, I tell them that it's not harmful and, and it's fine. And, no lasting repercussions. Point to the picture that best tells the meaning of parrot. Leinbarger is one of a new generation of scientists who are doing research involving their own children. They say that their children are reliable subjects and that they give them access that can allow them to do more in-depth studies. Meanwhile, ethicists say that some of these projects are acceptable and even valuable, but they also say that they can raise questions about the impact on the child, on the relationship with the parent, and on the objectivity of the data being collected. Where it gets really complicated is with the notion of informed consent and parental permission. Uh, normally, when someone is doing research involving children, uh, we ask for parental permission. Uh, but in this case, the very investigator who's doing the research is in a conflicted position. Scientists doing research with people are supposed to get approved by an institutional review board, which considers whether there's risk to the participants, whether they might feel coerced to participate, and whether the scientists might be biased. Leinbarger, actually like many scientists, doesn't feel it's necessary to tell the review board that she's using her children as subjects, but she does ask her husband to sign consent forms so that she's not the parent making the final decision. If anything, there is a benefit. There's never a harmful effect. So I really don't have concerns about her using the kids in the research. What's that over there? With new technologies available, some scientists have been inspired to gather data never before collected from children. MIT professor Deb Roy put cameras and microphones all over his house to record the first three years of his son's life. He's now using the footage to help him understand how children learn to speak. But the project raised questions about how to protect his son's privacy. Uh, imagine for a second that you've got a raw piece of video which uh, might have all sorts of private information, but there might be a scientific question where all you really need to know is uh, who's close to whom and who's far from whom. And so you could take a raw piece of video and convert it into avatars. So imagine a little X replaces me and another X replaces my son. And now that version of the video could be released. More practically, Deb Roy had wall switches, like light switches, to turn the cameras off when the family needed to. And there was the oops button. It would erase the last minute of video if necessary. If I walk out of the shower and realize the recordings are on, oops, let's, let's delete that last minute of video. They also did not record his son's potty training, so it wouldn't embarrass him later. And when his son turns 18, he can have all the recordings deleted. In general, it's not a good idea for parents to be doing research involving their own children. The um, Rare exceptions to that would be cases where um, the research involved very low risk. Uh, I also would be influenced ethically if it was an older child and he or she was willing to participate. Ready? As Leinbarger's two older kids grew, their opinions about their mother's research changed. I used to enjoy it because I think I was spending time with my mom and uh, she was asking me questions that she wanted to learn things about me. But um, now I think I don't really enjoy it as much because it's time consuming. But recently, Leinbarger was able to enlist her eldest son and some of his friends in the design phase of one of her upcoming studies. The study will measure if violent video games have an impact on the children who play them. Even in this early stage of the study, she struggled with ethical questions. So that was a dilemma. What do I do with media that I think can be really problematic for some kids? Is it problematic for mine? And could I actually do a study um, and give them a video game that was violent or not? Leinbarger ultimately decided that her son could participate in the project and that other kids could be enrolled in the study if they already owned the game. But scientists, like parents, have a learning curve and Leinbarger says she has crossed the line with her older kids in ways she would not repeat with her younger children. Once, for a study, she asked Alec 
if he thought his parents listened to him. And so he answered no, that parents, his parents didn't listen to him and that sometimes he felt lonely. And it really surprised me. Um, and so I kept asking him about that and why he said that. And that's the point where I think I pushed it too far because I needed to respect um, the boundaries more and not challenge him. All right, I got to give this to Callie. Can you um, time six minutes, please, and help me? Now when her kids are involved in a study, one of her staff members does the testing unless it's just a preliminary test to try out the questions. I fix it. You'll fix it. But despite trying to separate her roles as both a parent and a scientist, sometimes the two jobs still intersect. I tend to overreact if they're not proceeding developmentally, and Bill tends to assure me that everything's going to be fine and they're, and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So he reminds me to enjoy it rather than always thinking of, well, what question could I be asking or what should I be doing or that sort of thing. So he's reminding you to be? A parent. Right there. Ah, uh, the doggy. What's the doggy holding? Hairbrush. A hairbrush. 